So in this video, I'm going to talk about the different kinds of isomers and how they relate to one another. So first, we'll start off with constitutional isomers. So constitutional isomers. And so what are these? Well, essentially, these are molecules that differ. Um, they essentially have their atoms connected differently. So atoms have different, different connections. And so what do I mean by that? Well, let's say you have a molecular formula of C4H8. And so, as you can imagine, there's probably a couple molecules you could draw that have that exact formula. And so, one molecule could be a cyclobutane, because that has C4H8, or another one could be a molecule like that, so with a CH3 bonded off of it. And so, if you count it out, they'll, and if you count out how many carbons there are, how many hydrogens there are, you get the same formula, C4H8. And so those will be classified as constitutional isomers. So atoms are essentially arranged differently, but they have the same number of carbons or atoms in it. They're just connected to different things, so to speak. So the next type of isomer we're going to consider are conformational isomers. So conformational isomers. And so these are essentially molecules that can be made by converting, by rotating a single bond. So they can be interconverted by rotating a single bond. Rotating a single bond. And so what do I mean by that? Well, let's consider a molecule in its Newman projection form. So let's consider a molecule like this. You have H's there. And I'll just draw out the rest. And so let's first look at this molecule right here on the left. Um, as you can see, the CH3s are anti to one another. But, however, you have to remember that single bonds can be rotated. And so, these two, or the one on the right, can be made by rotating the single bond, essentially twisting it. If you have a model kit, it would help um, if you made this so you could see it better. But, essentially, these two are conformational isomers which means that they can be interconverted by rotation about a single bond. And so next, we'll talk about enantiomers and diastereomers. They were covered a lot in previous videos, so I'm not going to mention, go into that depth with this. So enantiomers, enantiomers, they are just mirror images. So non they are non superimposable. Mirror images. Non superimposable essentially means that you can't put the molecule on top of one another and have every bond in the same place. If you try it with a tetrahedral model kit 
um, a tetrahedral chiral carbon, you'll see that. And so in antimers, let's say if something had an R chiral carbon, um, it's an antimer would have the opposite, which would be an S chiral carbon. And so enantiomers have the f same properties, melting point, boiling point, but they rotate light in opposite directions, and we talked about that before. And then diastereomers. are non-superimposable, non-mirror images. So it's the same as an enantiomer, but it's not a mirror image. So it's also non-superimposable. Um, so usually um, these molecules have to have at least two asymmetric carbons. So has to have at least two asymmetric carbon atoms. And that's important. We covered that in a previous video talking about diastereomers. And so a compound with n being the number of n being the number of chiral carbons or asymmetric carbons, it has two to the n possible stereoisomers. And it's important to remember that it won't always have two to the n. It could be less, but at most two to the n. And then next, you also have the cis-trans alkenes. So for example, C, you have the CH3 here, C, CH3 here. So this would be trans compared to this, H, CH3. These are threes, so this would be cis. This will be trans. And so these are actually called geometric geometric isomers. And they actually fall under the category of diastereomers. So a geometric isomer is a kind of diastereomer. And so lastly, we're going to talk about meso compounds. meso compounds or molecules. And so as we discussed before, it has a center of symmetry. So it has an internal plane of symmetry. And as a result, the molecule is achiral the molecule is achiral, and because it's achiral, it is not optically active, not optically active. And what I mean by that is, if you recall when we talked about chiral carbons rotating light, or chiral molecules rotating light, that is defined as optically active. So anything that is achiral will not be optically active. And so that pretty much sums it up for all of the different types of isomers. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like it and share it with your friends.